Ladies and gentlemen, live from Kelvin University, it's The Tonight Show! Hello, and welcome to The Tonight Show. My name is Sam Tuitt, and I'm the host. We've got a great show this week. Professor Smart is here, and we've got a new segment we're trying out. But first, the news. It's now March, which means a lot of things are happening, even somehow, here on campus. As of March 1st, the dining halls are now open for single-person dining. So if you're still not over the Valentine's Day singleness, now look at you. You're winning. You're also winning if you bought uh, extra cheap candy after Valentine's Day. Tomorrow marks the beginning of the second week of Lent. In accordance with the season, we here at The Tonight Show have given up being funny. Hopefully, viewers notice some sort of change. March is pretty commonly known as Women's History Month, but it's also a time of awareness for other things. Namely, it's a month to be aware of two pillars of the NFL, as it's both National Cheerleading Safety Month and National Brain Injury Awareness Month. Speaking of sports, the NCAA Men's Basketball Championship has been canceled for the second year in a row, leaving me to complete my newest bracket, Starch Sadness. I'm just eating a whole lot of bread. Currently, sourdough is looking hot, but I was surprised at how far Rye was able to make it. Finally, it was recently announced that commencement for the classes of 2020 and 2021 here at Calvin University this May will take place at the LMCU ballpark here in Grand Rapids. This marks the first time Calvin is encouraging its students to get to second base. We'll be right back with Professor Sam Smart to talk about his upcoming documentary, Luminous. Professor Smart is here. He is a professor of film production and the communications department, and also now the co-director of the uh, master's ma program in media and strategic communication. Yes, and that's also for the communications department. That's right, the communication department. Lots of different things, right? So I teach in the film and media major, and I teach in the production concentration of the film and media major. But the communication department also just started this brand new master's program. It's a master of arts in media and strategic communication. Okay. It's for students who are interested in advertising, multimedia journalism, public relations, okay. and just started in January. We have our first cohort going right now. Very exciting. Nice. And it's also a mouthful to get through the title. It's a mouthful. You can just call it MMSC. Ah, okay. Um, you're actually on sabbatical right now, yes. right? Yes, gloriously. How is, how's that going for you? It's great. It's great. It's a really different experience. I've never had a sabbatical. Um, for those of you who don't know, students, you know, professors every seven years are eligible for a sabbatical. And, but you can't just get the time off. You have to have mm -hmm. a project that is deemed uh, worthy of the time off. And so if you don't know me, um, I have been working, my students all know this, but I've been working on this feature film Luminous for about six years, more than six years. The first thing I filmed was in November of 2014. Wow. And so this is the year that it gets done. Um, it's about an astronomer uh, and his work and of course an astronomer who's following the evolution of stars, that is not a very quick thing, yeah. so, you know, we have to be patient. Um, but yeah, I basically, you know, I get up in the morning and do kids stuff for a while, but about 8.30, I'm sitting down at, at, at Adobe Premiere, just like my students do during the semester, and banging my head against the wall for six hours or so, and then um, I play with my kids a little more and do dinner, and then in the evening, I spend a couple hours doing uh, producing work, um, nice. and so that... Uh, mostly right now involves setting up screenings. So um, okay. I've I've already scheduled about ten or eleven screenings uh, for the fall, which is a really nerve wracking thing when you haven't actually finished the film. Yeah, but it's important. I mean, it used to be that you work for years on a film and then it's done, and then you say, "Hey, world, we made a film," and you do some sort of mm -hmm. premiere. But that's just not the world we live in anymore. Yeah. Uh, and you have to be doing that work as you're finishing the film. So so that's really important stuff. I, I hope to screen it at. 30 or 40 amateur astronomical societies. And okay. then I also plan to start contact, that's my first audience that I'm working with now. Mm -hmm. And then I'm also gonna be contacting uh, schools, colleges, and yeah. churches. Uh, so hope to have a lot of screenings next year. Nice. Yeah. Um, yeah, the, the astronomer actually was Professor Molnar, right? Mm -hmm. From the, was so, it cool like working with 
like a colleague from Calvin to kind of create this project? Or Very cool. Yeah. What was what was that kind of like? Yeah, I learned a lot from him. I think that, um, and I still am learning a lot from him. I, I always saw a lot of parallels between him and me, his project and my project. And if you're not familiar with the story, that's the, the film is um, the story of the first astronomer in history to publicly predict the near future explosion of a star. Okay. No one has ever done that before, right? And okay. so, in, if you're familiar with Calvin News, he, he, he sort of came up with this in 2014-15. That's when I started following him. He went mm -hmm. public in 2017, and it went everywhere, all over the news, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, international uh, attention. Um, and it was set to explode in 2022. Mm -hmm. uh, but then in 2018, somebody in San Diego found a typo in uh, data, in, in a paper that Larry had not written, but that he was using. Oh. Um, and it was a typo that was not easy to catch. So it undermined the entire prediction. So this oh. is basically the story. And um, Larry's experience as an astronomy professor here at Calvin is like he doesn't have some huge budget to do, you know, detect gravitational mm -hmm. waves or take pictures of black holes. Yeah. But he has our telescope. And he's got this instrument that he can use to watch one thing for a long time and see how it develops, which is something that most of the bigger operations can't do. Okay. Similarly, I can't do a million dollar documentary, but mm -hmm. I have a camera. I can go watch one thing, one subject, and watch it over a period of time, which is in the documentary world what we call a longitudinal documentary. Okay. So I've been following him, and he's been following his star. Um, and your original question was, has that been has that been interesting? Yeah, yeah, it really has. Just to see older faculty, like more mature faculty, how they do their work, how they interact with their students, how different disciplines from my own work. Uh, I've learned a lot mm. about science. Yeah, um, some of the most interesting interviews I've done are with historians and philosophers of science, and um, I think that has ramifications outside the story just for our society. And I, I really enjoy thinking mm. about those kinds of things. So yeah, it's been it's been great. Cool. So you are also then uh, the co-director of the MMSC. Yeah. Um, to not say the whole long name out loud. Right. Um, and and you are on sabbatical this semester. But like, have you heard any news from like how that's starting, how that's going? I have. What are the projects people are working on? I don't know in that much detail, but okay. um, but I have heard. You know, the best thing about sabbatical is that you're not obligated to check your email all the time, mm. even even daily. Yeah. But I do every few days go through all my emails, and um, just a few days ago, I got an email from one of the other faculty members who just had this really encouraging note about how all the students in the co she's teaching. This is Professor Gronendike is teaching mm. the class in which the students develop their master's projects. Okay. And she said, all of these students are getting all the information from their other classes. And they're really seeing how it all comes together, and it's it's working. And the you know the, the oh. communication department had been trying to do this for about five years. Okay. And so it was a long time in coming, and um, it's just really great to finally see it up and going. And uh, that's also a testament to the other to the faculty who are teaching right now, Professor Holcomb, mm -hmm. Jesse Holcomb, Geert Hederbray. Um, yeah, and um, so you know I. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm very excited, and from what I can understand, the students um, are, are, are really liking it. Cool. That's, that's so cool to hear. Well, Professor Smart, thank you for uh, coming in and, and chatting. Um, this Absolutely. has been real fun. Um, we actually have a little bit of a trailer for Luminous that we're going to show uh, now. So let's go to that. All right. After hundreds of years of everybody knowing about exploding stars, knowing that there could be new stars in the sky, nobody has ever been able to predict this. A nova, a new star. That's what Larry Molnar is looking for. One in 10 million stars would go through this in a human lifetime. That's much beyond a needle in a haystack. A needle at least looks different from the rest of the hay. If you think about who out there is going to discover this star that's about to explode, Larry's not the most probable suspect. My job is to get the students interested in science. It doesn't matter if we discover something big or if we discover something that turns out to be wrong. He is deeply curious. Someone who has that raw, just hunger to understand the cosmos. If we see this star blow up, we're going to see what happened a thousand years ago with our modern cameras. 
wow, this is just a few years away. Nobody's ever seen anything of this kind. So suddenly we realize we're on a timeline here. In 2022, we might be able to witness an explosive creation of a new star visible by the naked eye. I think it takes a good deal of courage to step out there in front of other scientists who are going to do everything to essentially shoot it full of holes. I still think that there are other explanations. We don't think it's going to merge. I'm skeptical. I think it's a bold prediction. Most predictions fail. If you make a really risky prediction that then fails, you lose everything. It is extremely risky, can be very painful. You may waste all your life uh, trying to understand something and at the end of the day you really realize that you don't get it. Larry's working at the edge of knowledge. It's scary out there on the edge. Thanks again to Professor Smart uh, for sharing that footage with us. Um, up next, we don't have a musical guest this week, but we do have uh, this thing which Adrian, our uh, cameraman and editor and, and director and all around cool person, has graciously prepared for us. Adrian, do you want to come here and give us a little introduction? No. OK, well, uh, now this. My name is Adrian. Normally, I shoot and edit this show but this week i am sam i'm not going to say that say it but this week i am beyond excited to be sharing something that i'm extremely passionate about with you stairs Hello, welcome to Stair Stairs, the show where we share stairs here and there at shared stairs across campus. We also review them, but that doesn't really rhyme. Come with me if you're excited. Oh, we're good. Now these stairs, Really get me hyped. I can't, I don't have, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna read it because I don't remember. I can't, I can't. Well, these stairs look nice in panoramic shots of the front of the Cove, Covenant, Covenant Fine Arts Center. They are slightly shallower than normal, than a normal drain and make the front of the building completely wheelchair inaccessible. It says pause. What's, what's your name? Justice. Sorry, one more. Justice. Justice. Justice, how do, you, how do you feel about these stairs? They are interesting. Um, I like them. Yeah, my, my grandma died on these stairs. Maybe if I just like flex hard enough, I can keep it between my pecs. Nice view. Check. Sunlight. Check. Armrest thing. I think I dented it. Sunlight. Check. Stairs. Check. Let's see what one of the many students who, who attends here at Kelvin thinks of these stairs. Hello? Students? Anyone? Excuse me, sir. What do you think of these, of these stairs? Now this is something I just hate to see, an elevator. Next, we're heading to a particularly exciting set of stairs on Kelvin's campus. The stairs to the... D uh oh, I see people. Let's ask them what they think about these stairs. I can't, they're girls. I can't. I don't. I, I don't do women. Are they, we can't. We can't go over there till they're. Yeah. 
These stairs are another really great part of Kelvin's campus because they help you get across the belt line with, without being hit by a car. Let's take a look. Sometimes they even give you free drinks. Delicious. Well, clearly the fuck. Are you filming? No, stop. So here we are in the bridge to DeVos. This bridge was generously donated by the class of 2002. People keep walking through the shot. And they, have, they have no respect for art. Can I start also, over? Can I, can I start over my life so that I can make it that I've never met? Thank you for joining us for this week's episode of Stair Stairs. The show where we share here and there about our shared stairs. You're good. Walk right through the shot. It, oh. Bird. That was Stair Stairs. Thank you to Adrian for putting that together. Um, that is definitely going to be a recurring segment here um, and definitely was not a thing that I forced Adrian to do once because we couldn't book a musical guest for this week. Um, Thanks also to Professor Smart for coming in and chatting. Uh, that was real fun, and I look forward to seeing Luminous when it is complete. Um, the Tonight Show will be back next week. Jack will be back next week. I have been Sam. Good night. I have been Sam. I might not be Sam anymore. I don't know. Adrian, I trust you to put whatever outtakes in the outro and not make a fool of myself. I'm just gonna put this in. Yeah, okay.